The other solution was to have a small hole and use the T10. This was going to post to post to be and have the T10 here with this pressure socket, but uh, see, the solution is not solid. First of all, because this lamp is going to, as you see, is going to fall apart even if it does a click and it's pretty steady, but once you push it uh, to try to work on the pressure cable, uh, the pressure is not big enough, and uh, even if the hole is, is good, I mean, it's in, it looks like uh, it's good now, you see, it's good, it doesn't come out, but it's pretty clunky, and I mean, I don't trust this solution, to be honest, because when you put with the LED light, I think with the, the first vibration, you are going to lose the, you are going to lose the LED. So if you want to test it, try, but uh, I don't recommend it. So what are we doing here? Since we need to attach the socket here, what are we going to do? We are going to cut. We are going to cut this with the Dremel, like this, in order that we can have this ring, and then this ring is going to be attached to the to the uh, to the tail light. So here we have them. We are going to open the hole to get the entire lamp in we are going to glue this here so that we are going to have the case for twist and do a, a clean job so that we can have this section sealed with the hot glue and uh, we have the ceiling also of this properly if we need to change the lamp in the future there is no issue we can twist it and that's it 
that's the best way to do. This solution is a lot more work and then use with this with this LED light. And and that's it. Much better. So we need to fit this inside here and it will be a lot of light. Questo va qua e that's it. What we're going to do is that this is the the whole this is the piece that we cut. We are going to glue it this here so that then we can easily uh, plug this and remove it. You have this case that is the one of the original uh, of the original turn lights. I could not get the cable out, so I had to cut it, and then I will reattach. But then, once you have this, uh, you need to use an X key that is eight, and you you need to open this. Okay, once you open it, you see that there is a, a cable holder inside here. So you just try to pull the cable. So this is it. So now we have our cable. Now we need to prepare the cable. So we have the cable that I cut. So I will reconnect those and and ready to go okay so this is red and blue red and blue these are brown and black <laughs> to give you it works you can see give you a quick overview ah. Ah. so this is how it is uh, you see nice and clean now I'm going to adjust the cable with some tape and uh, adjust this cable and that's it ready to close
closing the video I wanted to give you some final uh, recommendation so after doing this work uh, I'm very open to say that uh, for me the best option is still let's say buying the original uh, tail lights uh, the European version or Asia or Latam as you want to because everywhere else in the US they sell the tail lights with the integrated turn lights why? Because first of all, it's a very clean and long-lasting solution because the tail light is completely sealed. So even if we did, I think I did a very good job with the, the glue in sealing everything. Uh, it's much cleaner also because some plastic go inside. Of course, you can use the uh, you can use the dies on to take them out, uh, but it's still not going to be 100% clear. Does it work? It's cheaper. Yes. But of course, uh, the, the original one is much better, it's plug and play. Why? Because you just need to remove the old one, put the new one, and then unplug the cable, the connector of the cable of the external tail lights, and plug the connector of the uh, original lights. Then if you want, you can also buy a Y adapter and keep both turn lights, and eventually replace the egg yolk with uh, some LED external LED lights so that you have two pairs of uh, turn, uh, external tur turn lights. The original integrated one and the external one or just remove the external and keep the original. Uh, then coming to the second point, uh, uh, of course it could have been much easier to do the option number two, just make the hole and use a pressure socket. The problem as you have seen is that the pressure socket, the aftermarket the T10, first of all is too small and, and second is uh, it's not stable. So if Yamaha would sell their pressure socket, the original one, it would be no brain. You open a one inch hole and that's it. You use the original one and you are uh, that has all those um, you have seen there are some profiles where the original socket, the pressure socket is going to be blocked because it has a lateral piece that blocks between uh, between uh, the two little signs that there are on the on the tail lights. But they don't sell it. Actually, I tried and tried. I've been looking for months everywhere and I have not been able to, to get them. The only way uh, I contacted Yamaha in different countries, the only way to get to those pressure sockets is to buy the entire tail light. So, no way. That's the uh, that's the that's the that's the way to go. Um, in terms of time, how long does it take? Well, uh, this really depends on you. I will say that you will take one hour, just to say one hour probably a bit less than one hour, uh, if you are familiar with it, to remove everything and almost one hour to put back everything once you have done, plus everything in between is the time that you need to do the work. And uh, you have seen, I have tons of video material I didn't do to avoid doing a video that is one hour, two hours long. But of course, once you do the hole, the best thing is to remove the tail lights and do the hole because you need to be very careful to avoid that the plastic parts uh, fell in the tail light. And um, because if they fell and you are not able to remove, you need to remove the external plastic. To remove the external plastic, you need to remove also the ceiling. So you need to use a knot gun to soften the plastic, remove it, and then you need to apply a new sealant again with the hot glue, so it's too much work. Uh, so that's why the, I say the option one is always the, the that is buying the original uh, European uh, tail lights is the best one. Um, but coming back to the point, uh, uh, I have tons of video material, I didn't put the old videos of how to remove the plastic, there are plenty of videos on YouTube, I will put some link in the description so that you can have them, and um, so they are to do different things, but at least you have the entire process uh, in the two, a couple of links that I can put in the description of the video so that you can see how is uh, it is pretty easy to remove all the to remove all the plastic in terms of the work as i was saying i have plenty of video of when i'm cutting the, the rings from the for the sockets uh, when i'm grinding uh, when i'm doing the holes and blah 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 everything has been resumed in a video that is 
probably less than 10 minutes but uh, it took me hours and hours so that's why if I should repeat it I will not do it to be honest because it's too much time uh, too much precision and I've been forced to do because uh, I was thinking that the solution number two with the, the smaller socket would have been good and it was not so instead of leaving the uh, tail light with the hole and uh, wait one month probably three weeks one month to get the original tail lights and have to wait and redo I say okay let's go up to the end and uh, let's do the work in the way number three uh, this work was published on ADB rider uh, two three years ago by CB rider so thanks uh, he posted some picture of how he did so that was my inspiration for the let's say last resort option so that's it i hope that you you got an idea of how to do it that you got inspired to remove those ugly external tail lights if you have any question feel free to post in the comment or i'm part of the group on facebook that is called yamaha xmax 300 usa feel free to join the group and uh, see you next one <music>